politicization that is coming into politics is making politics unattractive. And I tell you, and I sound this warning, if this is the way we are going to go all out, next time I will not be competing because it's not worth spending all this kind of money and not getting anything back. Unfortunately, people think that when you go to parliament, you make money. The, the converse is the, is the truth. It is an exact opposite. People who come to parliament, if you don't have any profession, you will not be able to succeed in parliament. And most of our people are losing because they didn't have the capacity, the financial resources to contest. Some of us have come through because of our professional earnings. We can continue to earn the money in our professions and come and dump them in politics and even attract the insults and the undermining and the name calling. So politics is becoming unattractive. And I'm serving this note that if we don't change our ways of selection, I will not be a candidate next time. We need to select people who have the capacity and the competence and the interest and the energy to go into parliament. We don't have to pick anybody to go into parliament. I cannot be a, a mason. I cannot be a carpenter. But no, he cannot be a mason. He cannot be a carpenter. But he can be a lawyer <laughs> and also want to be a member of parliament. The man you saw is in the studio with us, and he appears to be visibly frustrated. <laughs> What, what, what was frustrating you that much, really? Uh, and genuinely frustrated. Genuinely frustrated. You're right. You see, what, what, what had happened? Or you said you had concerns before, during, and after the primaries. Yes. What were those? The concerns before the pr primaries would be for you to uh, tour the whole constituency, send in your message. And trust me, any time you go to any uh, village or town to meet with your delegates, you, you, they won't meet you on, on, on zero. You have to expend something. You have to give they, them money. And, and if you could speak course, up a bit for if, me. If you, you want to bring them to one center, mm -hmm. you have to foot the bill. Uh, the transportation, the feeding, uh, the transportation back, everything depends on you. So there's nothing for free if you're going around to meet with your delegates. And look at the extent of your constituency. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one part of my constituency it takes you three hours to get there. Three hours? Three hours to get okay. there. Not even on good road. You have to struggle through forest to get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the wear and tear and the fuel uh, and all that. So you do that maybe three, four times. And you can imagine the amount of money that goes into it. And the time and the uh, other resources that you use. So uh, before the election, it is difficult. Um, during the election, you know, you have to still sponsor people to come and vote and all that. Mm -hmm. It's too uh, demanding of you. It's demanding. And these days, yes, these days of uh, uh, bringing people to come and vote, you have to motivate them to come and vote. They won't even come to vote. And all mm -hmm. these things are happening. Uh, because we want to select somebody for to represent the constituency. So what I'm saying is that let it be, uh, uh, let it not be a burden on one person or on a few persons. And uh, these people who are, are part of the political system, they are delegates. You are a delegate because you want to work for your party, not because you want to earn money from the party. So we don't have a good understanding of who a member of member of a political party is and the responsibilities of a political party. You, a political party aggregates the interest and champions the cause so that we see the kind of governance that we we, we expect, uh, governance that will bring development to uh, everybody, including your good self in a constituency. Well, but the, who was causing this? Is the case that now? You you would have to spend more than who, the person contesting you to be able to to have the assurance of securing your your, sometimes, your, your primaries. Sometimes you see those of us contesting, and we we you you have, you know all of us. We know all of them, and you know the, even the resource potential of the candidates. But all of a sudden, <laughs> within uh, a day or two. Somebody becomes too or overly resourceful to mm -hmm. want to kick you out. So where is this uh, strength coming from? Uh, you begin to worry that even on the day of election, somebody that you otherwise know over years becomes uh, a changed person. 
with uh, a bunch of resources at his disposal and uh, distributing uh, all kinds of things. Uh, uh, we decide, uh, uh, Wellington boots, cutlasses. You see, and you see, where, where from these things? So the worry is that if we are not careful, uh, people who earn money illegitimately will come into the center of politics and throw out otherwise very good candidates because they are not as responsible. This is the warning that I was saying. And to be honest with you, you want you, you go to operate in one area, uh, earn some revenue, and you bring this revenue to politics and people who uh, are in politics only to uh, take advantage of contestants who take these monies from you. That is not fair. So I'm saying that uh, before, during, and after. Now, having even gone beyond the selection, uh, you are the candidate. Everybody in the constituency, uh, they will come to you. Uh, my, my daughter is sick. My child goes to go to school and all mm -hmm. that. So before, during, and after, uh, they expect you to spend uh, money on uh, your constituents. And I'm saying that that is not the essence of representation. But so, you, you see, uh, the point is that you've been complaining about this, not just you, I'm mm -hmm. talking about members of parliament. You complain about this all the time, but yet you still go back, just like how you were frustrated on the screen, I mean, genuinely and visibly frustrated on the screen, talking about if, if you have to spend this much, the next time you're not going to parliament. You've been spending money. It's just that it's been increasing over the period. Mm -hmm. But the next time, we'll see you again. No, so uh, if parliament is, is, is not that attractive, you said that people think that people go in there to make money. If, if it's not the case, then see, why don't you just bow out and well, you know, good, save good, us good, good suggestion. all this frustration? Good suggestion. I would if I knew that this was going to be the case. And in any case, I'm in it because there are projects that uh, you are promoting. Mm -hmm. And some of the projects halfway, you need to leave a legacy uh, before you step out. And if these projects, sometimes if you leave, the project stalls and it's abandoned. Mm -hmm. You don't want such a situation because it will be as if you didn't even enter at all. So you want a situation where you deliver uh, to your people that which, is, uh, which are already in the pipeline and make sure that at least you are associated with something uh, when you leave. And I'm, I've said this notice that I will not do the same things that we did uh, in the past, again, that is the notice I've said, and I'm sure that in the next four years, if I have the opportunity to represent them, we'll be able to finish most of the projects that are ongoing, and then I will humbly buy out. I see. So that, is that to say that in 2028, you are not going to contest again? I said that if this is the same process that we are going to use in selection, then I will well, not the be process part. will not change. If it doesn't change, I will not be part. You will not contest. Trust me. If the situation doesn't change in the situation terms of, of money, monetization, monetization, you have to pay if so I have much. To pay, I'll pay. So How I'll much did you it. spend in these primaries? Well, you will not, you not compete, compute as much as you are pay, paying because it doesn't happen uh, regularly. You see, okay. uh, this one is taking this, this one is taking that. This, you see, so you hardly would you be able to compute effectively how much you put into the campaign. But obviously, you know, in 20, 2015, for example, when I was coming in, uh, I didn't even know that you needed to spend money even in the national campaign. I had mm -hmm. to sell my property. You, sell, you, you, you sold your property? Yes, I did. You, your, your house or yes, your house? Yes, a house. You sold the house? So I had to sell it. To fund your campaign? To fund the campaign. How, how, how can I continue to do that? The national election, you see, uh, the last election, 2020, when we finished and I came to Accra, there was a petrol filling station that I was uh, buying petrol from. I had a bill of 70,000 Ghana cities only for, for fuel. I had to go and settle. And uh, how long can we continue to do this? And the many people in politics, uh, those who are following, they don't see as much as you're putting into a political campaign. And I'm saying that uh, if you do the balancing, you will see that it is not, uh, it is not beneficial, uh, except that you have a, a, a policy to support your constituency. You think you have something to give to society, 
you think you have something to contribute to uh, uh, the development of the community. That's why you, you stay in there. And I'm saying, if the situation doesn't change, I will not be a candidate next time. And I want to emphasize it and repeat it. It, it is for our political parties. You know, the actors are the contestants, the delegates, mm -hmm. and the parties. Um, if the parties change the modus, probably all of us will respond to it and abate the expenditure in the campaigns. If the parties don't change the modus, and it is the delegate system based on who pays that much, then I personally, I will not be part. You see, you, you were part of the few constituencies that not just us here at uh, your election command center were looking at, but a number of people because of the position you are taking about some of the issues prior to these primaries. For instance, you, together with your colleague, uh, Eugene Boachentri and a few others, you led the charge of these 98 MPs who came out on the, the MPP to impress on the president to sack the finance minister. Well, that, that hasn't happened as yet. But there was that suspicion. Perception. Suspicion, not this perception. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That you had been targeted to, to be dealt with because of that position you are taking. Your colleague, leader of this MPs, didn't survive this. Eugene, and she lost the subing seat. Well, the, the, the bid to represent the NPP in 2024 elections. You survived. You are saying, out of frustration, we just saw that you had to spend so much money to be able to even retain this opportunity to contest on the ticket of the party at the primaries. Did you get the sense that you... You, you were being targeted and someone had been resourced. You just said that somebody came up within a few days. The person has so much resources and is distributing Wellington boots and witty size and things, which you couldn't do for many years you've been in parliament. What sense did you get there? No, every uh, contest is different from the other and particularly different because uh, the expectations are different. The candidates may be different and the, the, the presence of such candidates may also be different. So I saw this one also as a very different uh, contest. Uh, there were suggestions and uh, fears of uh, uh, people ganging up against me, uh, either from the constituency or from outside. And I also heard of uh, attempts by people to mobilize resources in support of a candidate against me. I saw that. Mm -hmm. I heard of that. You, but you I saw was and very, heard that? Oh, I, like I said, the day before the election, the things that I saw about mobilization of uh, resources uh, sometimes baffled me, uh, particularly uh, the distribution of these um, agricultural inputs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't know where it was coming from because I thought that if people needed to... Uh, distribute agricultural inputs at all in my capacity as a member of parliament, I should be one of the people to be to given such uh, resources, but I wasn't. Uh, nevertheless, I wasn't going to lose my focus. I knew that um, uh, I needed to preach to the delegates and I needed to take base with all of them mm -hmm. and make sure that uh, they understood uh, what I represented. In any case, because I had the advantage of being the incumbent, I had stayed with them for some time, and they knew me, and they knew what uh, I thought of them, and you know they knew what I had done also with them and for them, and therefore I always, I always wanted to remind them that I have been with you through the thin and take, and I expect you to return the goodwill as I have done. So also. no amount of machinations against you. I think uh, that was the trick that uh, okay. they had seen me and know me enough and they had worked with me and enjoyed me enough and therefore no amount of uh, uh, influence would uh, you know substitute the goodwill that I had with them. So I want to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to uh, all of them, the delegates and the general party 
And I also want to uh, express appreciation to my contestants uh, who pushed me to do my best. And I, see. I only want to invite all of them back into the campaign so that we will prosecute the agenda for uh, the party, not for anti appeal people. Well, you, you, you came into politics, you've, you, you, you've seen the increasing levels of monetization. You say, if this continues, you're not going to contest. You sold your house in, in 2015 to fund your campaign in 2016. You knew the benefit you were going to get from contesting and getting into parliament. That, that's how come you sold your, your house. Other than that, you would have still decided to be a lawyer and still earn your money. You, you see, uh, sometimes uh, there is something that you gain in uh, political representation that you don't gain with any amount of resources, and that's uh, recognition. Uh, if it was not for my position as member of parliament, would I be on your show this morning? The answer is no. Uh, if I wasn't a member of parliament, uh, I wouldn't receive the recognition I would be, uh, have been receiving, even in my, the practice of my profession. So uh, oh. it is uh, something inherent that you don't see but works for you. So you've gained some benefits from being, getting to parliament. Uh, of course. The recognition your invitation, has increased your... your invitation to appear before the show this morning. How different am I from other Ghanaians that you will call to your show? Uh, so, so, so you the, got benefits. So the, the way you say is you have to sell your house. So you know it's, you look so frustrated. Oh, I have to sell my house. You, you when, wouldn't do that if you don't know the benefits see, you're going to get. When you're coming in for the first time, uh, your appreciation of the situation is different from when you are in there. So somehow the energy that you bring into office, you bring into the equation coming in is different from when you are there. And trust me, there are so many of us who have uh, regretted. Uh, for the path we took in, to come into Parliament. Uh, but when you are there also, uh, the expectations are different and varied. And in, in that position, you need to perform to a constituency, not to yourself or to your family. So uh, it changes the very moment you assume the position of a member of Parliament representing a constituency. So many people... Indeed, I've seen people who have moved from very lucrative uh, uh, engagements into parliament and have regretted. I've seen uh, CEOs uh, who have uh, varied expectations but when they come. I've seen a friend of mine who was a medical officer, a very senior medical officer in a very uh, popular uh, hospital. He came to, he came to parliament after spending all his earnings to come to Parliament. And within the first month, the man was always very quiet. He said, okay, my friend, why are you always very miserable like that? He said, if I knew it was like this, I wouldn't have come. No. So sometimes you jump into it before you realize that uh, uh, you have done a disservice to yourself. But once they, uh, like I said, mm -hmm. there are a lot of expectations also be when you become member of parliament. You cannot run away from them and because you have already come. Uh, no matter what your, the pain you have, you still have to deliver. So, uh, well, it is not everybody in there who would otherwise have been there if they knew what was there. Uh, but be it as it is, uh, we are there and in the public eye, we need to also uh, leave a legacy before we leave. 